What's up, heathens? How ya doing? Today we have more people in the comments, but first we have to crown the dumbass from last week. And last week's dumbass was... This dumbass right here! Yes, you! That says wind science is fake. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what you're considering wind science, because wind is a thermodynamic process, but... Sure, bud. Go ahead and disagree with pretty much all of science while you're at it. If you picked this dumbass from last week, then you win a million god points! Remember, these god points are worth about as much as any weather update that we get from President Trump. It's pretty useless and wrong all the time. And he triples down on it. Hey, speaking of dipshits! Ah, somebody's calling Mark Sargent a shill. Whew! And apparently I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to biblical history. According to this one guy, I'm an advocate for NASA like I'm a lawyer defending his client. Somebody uses the amazing video that Uhan Roderick, which big shout out to Uhan here, uh, put together from the Skeptic Mafia. They, they use that particular opportunity to tell me that I need God and Jesus in my life. And God loves atheists even though we don't believe in him. So, if you're interested in any of these dumbass comments, then please stay tuned. Before we get to the comments we have... Today I learned... And first up on Today I Learned is something rather confusing. That the most common street name in the U.S. is second. First is the third, third is the second, and fifth being the sixth most common. That is so confusing to even, like, I'm surprised I got that on the first take. So it, it's just a confusing, like, list of, of top street names, I guess. Just very confusing. Next on today, I learned that researchers say they've identified 14 molecules and blood that are tied to dying from any cause, and that a score based on the molecules can predict risk of death over a 5 to 10 year period. The team hopes their find encourages lifestyle interventions and helps doctors make treatment decisions. And I hope so too. I love using science to prolong the lifespan of humans in general. For one thing, it's like a big fuck you to God because we don't care about whatever plan you may have concocted for our life. We're going to use science to fuck your shit up. But on another hand, knowing more about the human body, knowing how it works and everything like that can only be beneficial to us. And then finally on today, I learned that if Roe versus Wade is reversed and if the 21 states classified as highly likely to outlaw abortion do so, the increase in travel distance to abortion clinics is estimated to prevent between 94,000 and 144,000 women from accessing abortion care per year. Now, I know a lot of conservative Christian type people or pro-life uh, type people are going to be ecstatic about this. The whole idea that Roe v. Wade could be overturned. But I, I find this to be incredibly regressive. And I don't use that word lightly because I, I fucking hate that word. But it is very regressive because you're regressing our healthcare system back to a time when people would get back alley abortions and most likely die from them. So you're really only endangering the lives of women and you're going to increase the teenage pregnancy rate. So fuck you. Well, that's it for today. I learned. And next up is out of context comic. Today's out of context comic is just this. If you can explain it to me, explain the context, explain what it's from, uh, what characters are there. I mean, I'm not sure. All I know is, is that the one guy is shooting a laser beam out of the back of his head, smacking that guy in the face and the face or the guy is just going, yeet. And it kind of seems like something my son would say. <laughs> oh, God, the fucking yeet shit. If we could just do away with that in general, would be so happy. Oh, you guys hear it? You know what time it is. Shitty ass science. We're gonna answer some science shit really wrong. 
Oh, what's up, motherfuckers? How y'all done? It's Bro Cephas here with some shitty ass science. What do we got today? Well, oh, apparently this person tried to summon entities and they flee. Why are they so afraid of me? I even tried the so-called Lucifer chant. Okay, well, first up, I don't know what your setup's like, but you gotta make sure you got all the kitty cat blood and everything like that set up appropriately. Otherwise, the demons, when they get called to a certain place and it's not dressed up like they like, they're like, the fuck is this shit? Do I look like some kind of trailer park fucking demon? Get, I'm, I, I'm fucking out of here. I don't care what you want. You can go fuck off, dress this place up in the correct amount of virgin blood and kitty cat blood, and I will be back. This place looks like you went to Walmart to dress it. God damn it. Fuck you. And then they flee. So you got to make sure that you get your pentagrams all right and everything like that. Now, me, being a good old Christian boy, I've never actually done this, but I have ran up on the satanic practices. And I have to say that they can just fucking go to hell. All right? If you're practicing this shit, fucking go to hell. It seems like that's where you want to go anyways. I mean, you want to call for Satan. I don't know what the fuck this Lucifer chant is. Hold on. Let me look this shit up real quick using this Satan machine. Oh, okay. It's a whole, like, whole chant thing. I found it on some site called Scribd. That's pretty short. Let's see if we can make Lucifer come right now. <clears throat> we invoke the mighty God. Lucifer, Lucifer, by the flaming upright rod. Lucifer, Lucifer, Lord of darkness, Lord of light. Lucifer, Lucifer, join us in the ancient rite. Lucifer, Lucifer, hunter, hunted, living, dead. Lucifer, Lucifer, oak and holly, crown thy head. Lucifer, 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 golden goat of smokeless flame. Lucifer, Lucifer, dreaded king of black elfame, elfame. Sorry, I fucked that up, Satan. Lucifer, Lucifer, master, trickster, teacher, god. Lucifer, Lucifer, master, tr uh, oh shit, fuck. Serpent girded, full of pride. Lucifer, Lucifer, take us on the witching way. Get a scroll. Lucifer, Lucifer, to the Shabbat now we will, but we pray. Lucifer, Lucifer, say the above three. We don't got time for that. Then there's a refrain. And then it says, hush thine voice and stay thine drum. Lucifer, Lucifer, for our horn masters come. Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer. I think it's because I didn't say it three times. That makes sense because they love the repetition just like in the Bible. Anyways, you get the whole point here. You just got to chant that a lot. And then supposedly demons or Lucifer himself might show up but remember like i said i didn't have my shit all dressed up here i don't have anything going on or it could just be a bullshit fucking chant who knows but i do need to i'm um, getting told by somebody in my ear here most likely satan that you should not sacrifice cats or virgins this is i'm just saying that's what you would need to do but I am officially telling you, do not sacrifice these motherfuckers to anybody. Do not get virgin blood or kitty cat blood and draw a pentagram on the ground and then do this Lucifer chant. The demons don't want any kind of shit to do with you. Just lay off of the fucking Lucifer stuff. I don't know. Get right with God. Suck the Jesus dick. The only way to get right with God is to suck Jesus' dick. That's how you get past heaven. Jesus is like the bouncer of heaven. So all you got to do is suck him off, get that Holy Spirit inside your gullet, and then you're good to go. It's kind of like a scanner thing that goes on in there. You don't have to do all this chanting shit in order to get into heaven. You just got to suck a little dick. So that's, that seems a little bit better than this whole Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer thing. Oh, Jesus Christ, just... Oh, fucking Satanism is just so harsh. You can't believe they make you go through all that fucking paperwork. You think you gotta fill out triplicate shit for that? Anyways, I'm done talking about this Satan shit. I better get back to sucking Jesus' dick before God thinks I'm a Satanist. I'll see you heathens later. Goodbye. Oh, man. Woo! <laughs> I don't know if you know, but the, the chant worked. Uh, that wasn't Lucifer that came up. Lucifer sent his little pool boy, I guess. 
with the unicorn thing. I mean, I get it. It really was just me popping up behind Brasifus, but anyways. Oh, man. Don't try to summon demons. I don't know what that particular thing requires, but don't do it. Also, the Lucifer chant? How repetitive was that? Why do you gotta say it three times? Three is a magical number, that's why. All right, that's enough of the shitty ass science. Y'all ready for some comments? Comments of the day. Prepare to face pop yourself in the next week. First up on the commentary today, we got Hamster Lord. Hamster Lord here. Mark Sargent is a shield. If you were debating him, you are not attacking the Flat Earth Movement. You are attacking the Flat Earth Straw Man. Behind the curve is also controlled opposition. There is no proof the Earth is curved or moving, and I'd be happy to explain how the proofs work and how you've been tricked in a polite manner. I encourage those to ask questions and not just accept proof when presented with title. You must understand it yourself and how it works, so as you aren't made to be the fool. Well, hamster lord, <laughs> I uh, await your presence here on this channel to explain to me how the proofs work, because I have investigated a lot of the Flat Earth proofs, and all of them have come away not very good. Like, they've all been debunked. Every single claim that these people come up with is just ridiculous. So, I will try to get in touch with you, but right now, I probably have my email on the screen. If you're watching this, Hamster Lord, please contact me. I'll try to contact you. Future episode of GE, along with my other future episodes of GE. Hey, Carol Miller here. The... Blood of Jesus protects Trump! Election is sure! Thank you, Lord Jesus! Hey, I bind all demonic powers against Trump's election in Jesus' name! Well, Jesus Christ there, Carol. Why don't you cast a magic spell on Trump's presidency? <laughs> it seems like what you did. But, uh, yeah, the blood protects tr uh, Trump? I don't... I don't know how the blood of Jesus would protect Trump. I mean, for one thing, Jesus has to exist first in order for his blood to protect him. Another thing is, is I don't know what blood has to do with protection other than it'll make sure people stay the fuck away from you. You throw some blood on Trump, nobody's going to touch his ass. Also, why are you binding all the demonic powers that don't exist? I don't understand what a Twitter incantation is going to do to protect Trump. David Ver here. You have absolutely no clue what you're talking about. It'd be really great if you just stuck to engineering and took this embarrassment of a video down. To call this an analysis would be like calling a train wreck an analysis. Uh, okay. Uh, I have studied the subject of biblical history for a few years now. I've read a lot of different books on it from different authors. Everything that I presented in that video is peer-reviewed research on it. I mean, you can fucking look it up if you want to, but everything that I gave you was, like researched and shit. It's mainly contained in my Crestus app. If you'd like to go there, that's backed by peer-reviewed research. So, please do. Aqualina Gale's here, and I have a lot of shit to say about Original Sin, so I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm just gonna go directly into it, okay? The snake a.k.a. Satan, told Eve that she wouldn't die if she ate the fruit. He lied to her, saying God just doesn't you, uh, doesn't you to be as smart as him. I guess it doesn't want. Adam was there when the whole thing happened, excluding Jesus. He was the smartest human that ever existed. You might want to try to work on how you structure your sentences here, because, like, when you said Adam was there when the whole thing happened, and then excluding Jesus... Like, uh, it feels like Jesus was also there, which I, I think there are some people out there that argue that. Well, because, like, Jesus, the Messiah, is a pre-existent figure, and uh, he's the agent of creation of God. So, I mean, Jesus would have been the one to create the world and everything like that. Uh, that's one particular, like, doctrine that's not really discussed. This verse proves it. The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. 
He didn't stop Eve at all. He allowed her to eat it, using her as a guinea pig. Nothing happened, so he took the fruit that she gave him and ate it. And that's when sin entered the world. Eve blamed the snake for tricking her, and Adam blamed Eve for giving him the fruit, even though he knew it was forbidden. That's the problem even in society now these days. People always want to blame someone or something else for their problems instead of admitting they messed up. Adam got lonely. That may have taken months or even years. That's when God created Eve, created Eve. Since Eve wasn't around as long, that's why the snake tempted her instead, because she was more naive. Adam wouldn't have fallen for it. So you're reading a lot into the original like origin story in, in Genesis, because all of that is not actually sourced in the biblical literature. Adam using her as a guinea pig? He didn't use her as a guinea pig. It's not like he was standing right behind her being like, oh shit, you, you hear that snake Eve? I don't know if we should eat that fruit. Why don't you do it first? It's not, it's not like that was happening. It's not like he was actually using her as a guinea pig. That shit was happening just all on its own. And then Eve gave, you know, Adam the fruit and everything. And because both of them didn't know right from wrong because they didn't have the knowledge yet, they ate it. A lot of apologists want to say that they knew that it was wrong to disobey God, but I really don't think that you can make an actual case for saying that uh, Eve already knew right from wrong. Like, there's no way that you can make that case because uh, uh, supposedly that was the tree of knowledge of right and wrong. So I don't see how you can make that case, but anyways... I also love at the end here how you're reading into the passages that <laughs> she was more naive than Adam because she was younger. <laughs> Adam knew better, but apparently because she didn't immediately fall over dead, he was convinced that God was lying, maybe? I don't know. But if he knew better, then why did he even eat it in the first place? So, I mean, it's kind of self-contradictory when you think about it. Louis Diaz here. You guys are so lame. It's funny how you guys advocate for NASA like you guys are lawyers. It's like it doesn't, it does not matter what the dependent, what the, the dependent did. He got money. I will take his case. It's like if I don't agree with the doctrine you get in school, then I am a moron. And by the way, the maker of this video, stop eating McDonald's. It's really bad for you. Actually, just look up GMOs. I am sure you don't know what they are, but you eat them every day. And sorry if I am a bit harsh. It's just so hard not to when you care more about that CGI Earth photos, which again is lame. Oh, and by the way, the reason... Why you must likely die, will die of diabetes due to, to, does GMOs and EMF of millimeter waves. Look that up too. And I hope you know company name is Monsanto. Good luck with a life of premature hospitalization. Wow. That went from you're so lame you believe in a globe earth to <laughs> you're going to die because of EMF millimeter waves, whatever the fuck those are. Like, I know what EMFs are, and I, I guess I know what he's talking about with millimeter waves. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm just guessing he's talking about the amplitude uh, of the waves or something like that. Anyways, and apparently Monsanto are going to put me in premature hospitalization. Like, is there a general time in a person's life when they definitely will be hospitalized? Like, I don't think that there's ever a specific time in someone's life where they will be hospitalized. I mean, you can die of natural causes, and most likely you probably will be put in the hospital before that point just because of how reality works uh, and how our human bodies work. But I don't think that there's ever a designated time that, you know, we will be put into the hospital enough to be, like, considered premature. <laughs> I also don't eat McDonald's a lot. You don't know what I fucking eat. And apparently me defending uh, the Globe Earth photos is enough to enrage him to the point where he he talks about how I need to stop eating certain foods he thinks is bad for me and and and, and labels those as GMOs as, as well as, you know, McDonald's. But I already covered that. I wonder if he's the kind of guy that goes to like farmer's markets and he only eats like homegrown shit from like farmer's markets. I mean, honestly, I don't have that much time, bro. Cindy Gonzalez here. 
The possibility that life made itself from natural selection or chance is nearly impossible because the probability of Adana Strand being properly put together by chance is very, very rare, even in the amount of time Darwin evolutionists claim it would take. There are thousands and thousands of possible sequences to the point where you more likely to come up with nothing rather than something even in that amount of time especially sounds like a lot of time to us us but it is mathematically impossible under those conditions so atheists don't know the origin of life the fact that there is a code telling us to form new proteins in our cells for example, means that there is information behind this process. So the problem with natural selection also that if the code is being disrupted by random mutations, then the process would have been stopped before it can reach anything new and functional. So evolution can occur because natural selection can only serve a functional purpose. Natural selection is good for preserving already existing functions in existing form with slight variations, but it cannot form new functions. What? Your entire explanation for evolution just doesn't make sense. First of all, given enough time, the random stuff that happens can actually produce the changes needed for life to occur. Uh, there's been several studies done uh, around the topic of abiogenesis, which is what you're talking about, which doesn't actually involve evolution, because even if God Thanos snapped life into this universe and it was at the like cell level or whatnot, then evolution could still take place after that cell. You talking about the number of mutations needing to occur in order to produce the diversity of life, your entire mathematical description of that is totally bogus. That's not how fucking math works. And if you knew how math works, you wouldn't be saying this shit. Also, what the fuck do you think natural selection is? Because nothing that you said there actually describes natural selection. So I'm Grounded commented with, Don't forget, Paul's scriptures were the old Jewish Torah. The New Testament wasn't written until much later. Yes, so I didn't directly state that in uh, Monday's video, but I did say that the Gospels were written way after Paul, and Paul was using scriptures at the time, which would have been the Jewish scriptures, the uh, Septuagint uh, or Torah or whatever uh, existed at that time. But then South, Her South House Productions comes in and says, No, genius, though they were not all Jewish Torah, these were writings of Paul that were direct revelations from the ascended Lord, Romans, and then all of that, which, funnily enough, 1 Timothy is not a, a, an epistle by Paul. It was forged in Paul's name, but it's not an official epistle. Romans, Ephesians, Colossians, uh, Galatians, though those are fine um, uh, references for Paul. But anyways, Paul said that he got his information from uh, revelations of Jesus. That was one, but he also read the scriptures. I don't know if this person maybe just doesn't understand what Paul actually said, but Paul actually says revelation of Jesus and scriptures as his sources for the information that he had. He also made sure to state that nobody else in the area or, or in the area of you know, early Christianity could have gotten their information about Jesus through any one person or any people at all. They had to get it for, through revelation or by reading the scripture. South House Productions, you're half wrong. Dark Knight Apologetics, and I'm just stopping by to say I'm glad you can have friends. Everyone needs friends, even those who are wrong. Oh, okay. Thank you for taking that wonderful moment there and just inserting your shit here because that's what you're about to go into. I still think you're wrong and I will never sub to this channel. <laughs> Big fucking surprise there. I will pray that your friends that are, claim to be, Christian will make you reconsider the truth of Christianity. Well, no, because the people that I choose to have as friends that are Christians, they don't feel the need to push their faith on me. They understand that their faith is theirs and, and my lack of faith is mine. So we don't have any kind of miscommunication there. We both respect each other. I'm not trying to force anybody to give up their religion. I'm not directly shitting on anybody that subscribes to me or any of my friends and their belief in a God. 
like I shit on arguments for it and I shit on people that first shit on atheists, but that's a response. See, most of my videos are response videos. I don't just drop trow and shit on people at will. Of course I want atheists to read the Bible and hope that they will come across that one verse that will make them reconsider the truth of Christianity. Of course, God exists. Amen. Well, every week on Tuesday at about 9.15 a.m. Central Time, we actually do a Bible study here on Godless Engineer. If you're interested in knowing what the Bible actually says and hearing our responses and clarifications on context and arguments, uh, uh, you know, how, how the Bible actually relates to arguments that you're presented with, you know, in your daily life, then please stop by on those mornings or just watch our playlist of the, called The Daily Bible podcast. Uhan Rodrick, who I mentioned earlier, is helping us get it on multiple podcasting platforms. I did used to have it up there, but it's, <laughs> I got really lazy with it. I didn't really see a lot of return with it, but we're getting back on that. So if you like to listen to podcasts, they will be up there soon. Or maybe he got taken for a ride. <laughs> Yeah, Kent Hovind definitely got taken for a ride. Or m maybe the guy that saw the pterodactyl actually got on the pterodactyl and rode it. Although, he's kind of a big guy. Pterodactyls aren't all that big. They're about one-fifth of a whale penis. I bet you would know about micropenises. Oh, shit, nope. I only know a lot about whale penises. Did you know they were 15 foot long? Whew, that's about <sighs> half of my penis. God loves atheists too, even if they don't believe in him. By the way, I'm Joel, and I just care for your soul. So why don't you just bow down and suck that Jesus dick so you can get into heaven? I mean, I realize that it's a lot to ask for, but you just got to get that Holy Spirit juice all inside your gullet, and then the scanners will let you into the gate of heaven, okay? It's really, I mean, it's awesome up there, okay? Sure. There's a daily dick sucking time, but it's okay because you get to taste the Holy Spirit all in your mouth and then you got to swallow it and show it back to Jesus, you know, like they do in them dirty movies. Do Wayne here, and I'm just going to tell you that you could tell that this guy don't believe we really live on a ball. Dumb and immature, using cornball explanation to hide shame. Just wait till it's publicly released. Y'all gonna jump off buildings and commit public shootings. You don't need much proof, but one to debunk the ball earth. Water don't stick to a ball. Jesus fucking Christ. When it's revealed that we live on a flat earth, you think that we're just gonna fucking throw ourselves off of buildings and shit? And cause havoc? No. <laughs> Strange tamer here, and I'm just going to let you know that the Earth has been slowly cooling. Climate change is bollocks. Look up Randall Carlson. I don't know why these people keep telling me to look up different people. Why don't you just tell me why you think climate change isn't a real thing right here in the comments? I would love to hear it, even if it's just a short explanation where you hit certain data points that you think prove it. Like, just do that instead of telling me to look up some random fuck Randall. But anyways, no, climate change isn't bollocks. Climate change is a very real thing that's happening. Uh, and true, while climate change does have is part of the natural process of the Earth, uh, we are accelerating the climate change, and that is producing very devastating effects. Have you seen fucking Dorian? If you haven't seen Dorian, take a fucking look at it. Mark Paul Paganganan here. I'm just going to tell you that bacteria is not real because I can't see them with my eyes. Use your fucking eyes. Just use them. You can't see bacteria. Lick that shit up off the floor in the toilet and you won't get sick because bacteria ain't real. <laughs> I can't take people like this seriously. It's got to be a troll comment. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think it's a troll comment. It's got to be a fucking troll comment. Fucking weird way to spell Anthony J here, and I just know that there's no proof of heaven. I personally believe that all souls go to heaven, dogs included, of course. As atheists, would you rather there be a utopian heaven for everyone forever, or would you rather just die and cease to exist? <laughs> utopian forever? Like, I, that would get so fucking boring quick. It's not that I want shit 
to go wrong or anything like here in reality, but that is the reality that we live in. Shit goes wrong all the time. A utopian heaven, while sounds nice for eternity, sounds like fucking torture. No, I don't want to live in a utopian society forever, for eternity. Like, living in it for the time span that humans usually live, fine. Utopian the fuck out of me. But for eternity... No. And it's not just like a utopian society that I wouldn't want to live in for eternity. I'm saying that I wouldn't want to live for eternity. That's what would get boring. I get it. We all die. That's a horrible thing to think about. And honestly, you shouldn't put too much thought into it unless you're doing something kind of risky. Because if you just dwell on the fact that you're going to die one day, then you're just going to spend your entire life dwelling on the fact that you're going to die. Then you waste your entire life worrying about that you're going to fucking die. That's no way to live. Anyways, that's all today for the comments. If you will, go down below, leave me your thoughts on each one of these comments, the, whichever one strikes your fancy. While you're down there, don't forget to vote for this week's dumbass. You can win those million god points that aren't worth shit. While you're doing that, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Don't forget to check out these links over here and make sure you stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.